Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Legal Cut Pro. My name is Greg Pang. And I'm Michelle Molyneux. And today we are doing this episode as a bit of an update because our apologies that we have not been the most active on this podcast over the last several weeks other than uh, releasing the uh, recording from a year ago of my mock trial of Thanos. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I still, I still uh, reminisce about it and uh, think about how much of a good time we had. So Today, we just have two things on the agenda is that we are going to talk a little bit about, I suppose we could call it sponsored content, um, about the Clio Cloud Conference, because Legal Cut Pro is attending as media. And then we'll talk about an uh, um, episode that we are working on that you'll be producing, I suppose, eh, Michelle? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. It should Excellent. be a good episode, hopefully. <laughs> Perfect, I think I think what will be. All right, first, before we get to that, let's uh, give our sponsor a bit of a shout out. This podcast is brought to you by Ampia and its professional development team. Special thanks to Jane Toogood, our audio editor, and you can find her on Instagram at JJ underscore Toogood. Thank you, Michelle. Now we get to our first segment, I suppose you could call it, is the Clio Cloud Conference. And this is because I am attending uh, the Clio Cloud Conference on October 21st and 22nd in San Diego at the Manchester Grand Hyatt. And they have given me a media pass. And as one of my obligations is that I'm supposed to uh, talk about the conference on this on this podcast. That's so, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, you've heard of this conference before, have you, Michelle? I've heard a little bit about it, but I honestly don't know a ton about it. So maybe you can teach me. It's a, it's a legal technology conference. And I think this is the, maybe their sixth or seventh time they've held it. I went to the very first one. It was, the very first one was in Chicago and it's hosted as it sounds like it's a uh, Clio, C-L-I-O. Uh, their website is goclio.com. The company their main product is this uh, legal practice management application, uh, online application that uh, lawyers use to manage their practice. They decide to hold this host their own legal technology conference, which um, is, you know, like I know obviously there's a, I have an interest here, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I, I can honestly say it is a fun, fun conference. It's a legal conference. Yes, but they run it more like a tech conference. And not having, okay, and, and, you know, this has to come with an asterisk here because not having actually gone to a pure tech conference before, but having read reports of them is that they, they are a lot more fun, I suppose, than a pure legal conference. And I've been to a number of, uh, I guess, legal conferences uh, hosted by the Law Society of Upper Canada, now called the Law Society of Ontario and the Law Society of Alberta. And there are usually, obviously, lawyers going dressed up in suits and hearing other lawyers talk. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of fun, right? Um, uh, and this one, uh, I mean, uh, th there is a point to that because, because you're supposed to be learning, you're updating your, uh, your skills and, and your knowledge in, in different areas of law and uh, ethical responsibilities and stuff like that. The thing about Clio, although it's a legal conference, it's uh, technology focused. And I'll quote you something from their website is that at ClioCon or the Clio Cloud Conference, quote, you will level up your legal tech expertise, connect with peers from across the nation and be inspired by game changers in the legal industry and beyond. And of course, cool. by nation, yes. And of course, by nation, they mean the United States. This is uh, the Clio uh, Cloud Conference has always been held in the United States. But the company, Thema Solutions, the one behind Clio, is based in Vancouver. Oh, and that's actually really neat. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but their main market for their software... Uh, and I think uh, rightly so is, uh, I mean, we have 10 times the population there and they're generally more, more ready to adopt um, new technology. At least the lawyers in the United States, I, I think are generally more ready to adopt new technology. So their main market is the United States. So they, they hold this conference there where most of their market is, right? Even though mm -hmm. they, even though they have clients all over the, you know, lawyer clients all over the globe. But uh, another interesting thing is that, I went to high school with the founders of Clio, Jack Newton and Ryan Govro. So No way. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And in its very uh, early years of Clio, and when I was first called to the bar in Ontario, uh, I was at this, I think it was the uh, solo uh, and small firm practitioners conference uh, hosted by the Law Society of Upper Canada um, in Toronto. 
and and I, and I walked into the area where they have the the exhibitors, I suppose that you call them, and there's Jack Newton standing with his little tiny booth trying to advertise his you know promote his software software as a service called Clio, right? So I mm-hmm. hadn't seen the guy for probably fifteen years or something like that. Well, maybe not fifteen, maybe ten years at that point, and mm-hmm. you know it's like like hey, are you? selling legal tech services and it's like, Hey, are you a lawyer? It's like, yeah. Okay. And that, that was kind of cool. So, uh, I've been with Clio a very long time. Um, I, uh, full disclosure, uh, I get a very good deal <laughs> from oh. them. So I'm not, I'm not exactly uh, objective here, but you know, like, so take that, uh, take my comments for what they are. Uh, I, I love the product and mm-hmm. I, uh, and I love going to the Clio cloud, cloud conference. And this year, like as mentioned, I'm going as media, because of this podcast, Michelle. So you're helping, That's you really help me. Exciting. Yeah, you <laughs> help me go to San Diego as media for the Clio Cloud Conference. So thank you. And Michelle. you're leaving me behind. <laughs> I said that you could go too, but I mean, you're, you're busy, right? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, because it sounds really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it, it is. I mean, we couldn't apply again another year, um, but. Uh, or or not, or just go as a regular attendees. And it's it's pretty cool. Um, and to just see who's who in, in legal technology and just to enjoy a, a pretty cool conference because they do a lot of cool things there. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like you're gonna have a lot of fun. I, I will. I uh, I always do this. So I think I've I think I've only missed two uh, Clio cons. So the last mm-hmm. one I went to was in New Orleans, which was very very oh, cool. cool. Yeah, I've never I had never been to New Orleans before, and that was such a fun city to, to be in. I've been to San Diego a couple times, but I definitely don't mind going back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's gonna be fun. What all will you be doing as media? I have to, uh, well, have to, I mean, and, and, I'm, and I'm very happy to, is um, I'll be interviewing a couple of, of speakers, hopefully, and, and, and attendees. Uh, I had planned to try to interview another, you know, for the sake of this podcast, uh, a, a U.S. entertainment lawyer who would be attending, but I don't think uh, the one that, uh, I, I was hoping that uh, Tamara Bennett or Gord uh, Firemark would be going this year, but I don't think either of them are going. Um, I'll, I'll try to reach out to them again. Uh, that they're the uh, hosts of Entertainment Law Update out of the U.S. But, oh, awesome! Uh, yeah, uh, but I don't think they're going this year, so I'll have to kind of uh, go on my fallback plan. Well, not fallback plan, but you know, like there, there's there are other options uh, for for interviews, and I'll have to attend certain. Um, uh, I think certain media functions there, obviously the keynotes, or maybe not obviously, but I have to attend the keynote address and, and write something about it and, and maybe record an episode of the podcast there or something like that. So it's one of these things that, you know, why are we talking about this is because uh, not, not just because I have to, but because just to demonstrate, I suppose, to our target audience as an entertainment law podcast, mainly targeted toward filmmakers, independent filmmakers, is that although the legal industry is perceived as, and you know what, rightly so, is a very conservative field, especially here in Alberta. And it, it, it does move forward. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and there are uh, th- those of us, uh, and, and they're, they're not, uh, they're, they're, we are growing in number in terms of, you know, the, the number of lawyers who are trying to progress the, uh, the practice of law uh, one way or another, you know, and technology is one way, of course, and, and there are other ways as well. So, you know, we're not just all, you know, uh, sitting um, on oak desks and uh, with our quill pens and, and typewriters. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, instead of uh, sitting with an oak desk, I currently have a blanket over my glass desk to uh, help muffle for the sound. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so I'm like, very modern. It's glass desks with blankets on top. And I'm sitting in the uh, a conference room. Um, on the third floor of our office, and I think this is particle board. This uh, uh, <laughs> this boardroom nice. table, and not uh, I think. I mean, it looks like wood, but I think it's actually particle board. So, so no oak yeah. desks for me. No modern lawyers, <laughs> and no and no uh, quill pen either. Have you ever held a no. quill pen? I don't even know what a quill pen is. No. I've I've had fountain pens before, and they were just really complicated to refill. <laughs> and what's a quill? But they were fun to write with. Yes, I, I have uh, written with a fountain pen before. Is a quill pen just a, a feather or something like that that you dip in a pot of ink? That's a good question. Like That's what I envision when I think about it. Yeah. No, I just remember I this, this not so very nice comment about um, uh, one um, institution that I used to go to. I won't name it. But uh, I think the quote was someone blasted it saying that I think the institution was like it was made up of 
quill pen empires and essentially saying that you know the the, the different uh, parts of the institution are very siloed and very bureaucratic i suppose right so it wasn't a, it was not a compliment pulled that term out of my butt and i don't know uh, if it actually even works in the context of how, how i used it but um it makes for an interesting talking point between us i guess <laughs> Well, we're modern lawyers. We yes, use that's ballpoint right. pens and particle that's board desks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And we're friendly. <laughs> that's it. That's exactly it. All right. So uh, that's uh, enough about Clio. Again, uh, that's the Clio Cloud Conference, uh, October 21 to 22. And we uh, hope to release this episode before uh, that time and um if uh, there are any lawyers who are listening it's a uh, cleocloudconference.com and um if you need a discount code i have a discount code for uh for passes if you if you want to take a last minute flight to san diego awesome well i look forward to hearing more about your trip when you're back sounds good yes and i i look forward to talking about it more yeah yeah that's awesome um, I guess, should I talk quickly about uh, what we hope our next episode may be about? Yes, Michelle. Talk, uh, let's, uh, I'm excited about this one because you have uh, put this uh, idea forward uh, quite some time ago, right? And uh, we are now uh, working on uh, something for it. Yeah, yeah. So I have been really curious about the use of drones. And there were actually some new regulations that came in in Canada. I, I believe it was early June. So I will find out the exact date for our next episode. But it's very interesting because it does change a little bit of the dynamic for filmmakers as to when and where and how they can use drones and then possible repercussions if you're breaking those rules. One thing I found really interesting, though, that I'm going to look into a bit more for our next episode is talking about the gentleman in Toronto who... Uh, used a drone to film the crowds after the Raptors win. And uh, you mean he the, clearly. The big, the big win? The big win, yeah. The big win, okay. <laughs> when they're all like, everyone's pouring in on Young Street or wherever they're partying. Yeah, yeah. So it was outside, and I don't know much about Toronto, but I'm thinking, like, it's like they're downtown, right? Yeah, uh, probably. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm probably. I'm guessing that I think the main uh, focal point uh, of the the crowd for the, the win right after. I mean, the celebration right after, probably around like Dundas Square or something like that. But anyway, somewhere in downtown. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. So he, this guy, flew a drone over the crowds and got some incredible footage. And this footage was then used by media outlets and a lot of people online. But the, I think the gentleman who used his drone admitted he did not have a license or permit to be using the drone as he was. And it theoretically could have been very dangerous to the crowds below because he was within, like, there were a lot of buildings, things that could have possibly caused the drone to crash and crash upon the crowd. So um, as it is right now, I don't think he's been charged with anything or any fines, but that kind of goes a little bit counter to what the regulations say right now. So it'll be curious to see if there are any more updates, but I thought this would be a topic of interest to a lot of filmmakers, sort of what are the rules and parameters and how do you keep everyone safe? And obviously for insurance considerations too, because you don't want any injuries on set. So I'm hoping, uh, yeah, we can kind of talk about some of those things and uh, just explain Explore the world of drones. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I, I mean, it, it's actually even is relevant to the the real estate uh, law course that I teach at uh, McEwen University. You know, in terms of well, trespass, airspace trespass. You know, beyond going beyond uh, uh, Transport Canada um, uh, regulations, and as well to what you mentioned, Michelle, about safety. You know, like uh, in terms of uh, like you, you had a story about uh, one time. Uh, was it on set? Uh, and there was a big drone that was filming inside a you know enclosed area we we were considering um yeah f to get some crowd shots and i've had a few kind of near miss incidents in my past on set um right. so i'm a little bit always kind of i'm probably over cautious and so i was quite concerned about sort of safety of flying the drone indoors so in the end thankfully we decided against it and I was much relieved but um, yeah I think it's just a consideration now when you know we have this amazing technology to get such incredible footage and then to look at sort of you know what are the regulations saying what's the industry saying mm -hmm. well yeah it would be really cool to actually talk to people who, who do this, you know, for um, as part of the jobs, you know, like drone flying to, to capture footage for, you know, for media or for, for, uh, for some kind of for production and stuff like that. So that'd be really cool. Yeah, 
actually, that's a, a good point, Greg, is maybe if any of our listeners kind of have experience with flying drones and either good stories or bad stories or different things, that might be great if they want to reach out and maybe we can bring them on the pod possibly. Sounds good. All right. So we will, uh, I guess we'll have that out when we have that out, but uh, we are working on that right now and uh, we have other things in the works, but uh, that's what uh, is uh, on the horizon at this point, uh, near and nearest than on horizon. So we'll have that um, uh, next up on the, the podcast. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Okay. Uh, anything else, Michelle? Ah, uh, no. I think that's all for today. Just got my got my drone research to work on, so <laughs> I'll get working on that. I never asked you actually. How uh, how are things going with the um, uh, the grant program that uh, you're part of the uh, um, production grant? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. Um, yeah. So I just started uh, the CMPA. Um, it's the diversity mentorship program that I'm working on mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's been really, really great so far. So I've been learning lots of things and, um, possibly maybe I'll through my work kind of blend and maybe come up with more ideas to discuss on the pod, kind of the things I'm learning as I go along. So yeah, it's been, it's been really good so far I'm working with some amazing people. So you can never go wrong when you've got a good team. Great stuff. Good to hear that. Yeah. All right. So I guess we'll sign off now. And th that is all we have for you today. So we will see you uh, next time or <laughs> we'll talk to you next time. <laughs> yes. Oh, and feel free to reach out if there are any topics that you'd like us to cover on the pod and I'll get to work researching them so we can put them on the podcast for you. Sounds good. Legal Cup Pro has been produced by Greg Pang and Michelle Molyneux. Excerpts of Just Say Go, Dr. Octavo Mendesity, mixed courtesy of Dr. Octavo and Michelle Molyneux. This podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only. Nothing stated on it is to be construed as legal advice. The views expressed by the hosts of Legal Cup Pro and any guests are their own and do not represent the opinions of any organization or other person unless otherwise stated. Intro sound clip film projector countdown has been truncated from its original form and is copyright 2013 Ivan Gabovich used under creative commons by 3 license outro sound clip film projector reel runs out by stefan021 is used under creative commons cc01.0 license this podcast is copyright of red frame law and is licensed to you under creative commons attribution non-commercial cc by nc 4.0 license for details of that license visit creativecommons.org <laughs>